Good day everyone, our video today is gonna be a presentation on the Yo Damper. Hello guys, Assalamualaikum, thank you for clicking on this video and as a reward, we will tell you about the secret. The secret of aircraft Yo Damper. What? You don't want to know about it? It makes you feel sick? Well, it's not like you can go anywhere, ha ha ha. For my session, I would like to explain and tell you about the basic construction and Dutch roll. So let's have a look, shall we? Anyway guys, as you can see here are the basic construction of your damper system which most of nowadays large aircraft utilize it. It is consists of your red gyro, a filter, a CADC and your damper actuator. It is started with the yaw rate gyro that sends and measures the angular velocity around its vertical axis which is related to yaw rate. The signal is then fed to the filter. The, the output from the filter is then goes to the CADC which means or is known as central air data computer. The CADC process all the signal such as the angular velocity and then it is fed straight to the actuator of the yaw damper. As the actuator moves, the transducer inside it supplies feedback signal to cancel out the signal from the gyro. Okay, now let's move on. I've always been wondered, have you ever heard of Dutch roll? Not this Dutch. Nah, not this Dutch either, even though he is a Dutchman technically, but that doesn't mean he is what we call Dutch roll, although he did a really good job by lunging to score the goal. And now, this is what I call Dutch roll. Okay, Dutch roll is an oscillation in your and roll. Usually, it is exhibited by passenger aircraft which generally have four factors. The first factor is higher wing loading. The second factor is they have a sweep back angle of 35 degrees. The third factor is the mass distributed span wise towards the wing tip due to engines. So for this factor it depends on the aircraft whether the engine is farther away towards the wing tip or closer to the root of the wing. The fourth factor is higher altitude so how does it happen let me explain when aircraft is disturbed in your greater lift will develop the fin and kill surface which the area on aircraft tail tends to correct the yaw but overswing occurs so we can say that the, this dutch roll makes the yaw and roll in the same frequency but they are actually out of phase. You guys might be wondering that suddenly my voice changed to a wonderful gentleman from the UK. Well, you're not wrong. To be true with you guys, I kicked out our former narrator. Look man. Yes I did. Um, no. Joking aside, that's Lookman's part all dusted and done. Well, here comes mine. Please be prepared because these following pictures may contain disturbing images that may sexually arouse your brain. First, notice that there is a positive output at the start of the rate gyro output. This is produced when aircraft rate of turns changes from straight ahead to a left turn. Also, notice that there is no, there's no output when the aircraft is at a constant rate of turn. Now, as you can see, at the end of the rate gyro output demodulated, there is a negative output. Do you know how it's produced? Well, you guessed it. It's produced when the aircraft from a constant rate of turn at the right to a straight ahead flight. Congratulations! Keep in mind that the rate gyro output demodulated is produced by the Dutch roll filter. Do you guys know how the Dutch roll filter looks like? Well, you're in luck. Let me show you. Okay, this is the Dutch roll. What the fuck was that? Calm down, bruh. How it works is that when the constant rate of turn changes to constant straight ahead flight, the capacitor discharges. At this time, the DC input, the demodulator, changes from a null to a negative. It's not that hard, isn't it? That's what she said! The picture at the left is an image of Dutch rule. 
since the rate of turn is constantly changing, the output of the rate gyro is constantly changing. That's why we have a wavy output. The 400Hz signal begins at the left with no output because there is no rate of turn. Then it builds to a maximum rate at one turn, then falls off to a null at the middle, then builds up to a maximum rate of the other turn. To keep it simple, the DC polarities are great when the rate of turn is great, and reverse when the direction of the turn reverses. There are two sensors that I want to explain today, which is the LVDT, Linear Voltage Differential Transformer, and the ENI bar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves, here comes the best part. Okay, first, I will explain about the LVDT. What the fuck was that? For God's sakes, man. Damn. Do you want me to shoot your ass up? Shut up. Right. <sighs> Let's continue. And this is how it works. Okay, when the position of the core changes relative to the two windings, an output is produced. Easy as that. And the movement of the core is signified by the output phase and the amount of displacement of the signal amplitude. Okay, next we'll go to the E and I bar. The What the fuck was that? Oh. What the fuck was that? Could you? What the fuck was that? Please? What the fuck was that? Oh my god, please go away. Is he gone? Yeah, I think he's gone. Alright, let's move on. Right, the output windings are connected in phase opposition to each other so that when the armature is in, in null position, then the resultant output is null. Keep in mind that movement to one side causes the amplitude of one phase to exit the other. The output is a difference in the two phases. See, it's easy. That concludes our video for today, but before you leave, don't forget to click on the like and share button. Thanks for watching. Cause I got it like that Flow so smooth like I got it on tap Yeah, and I'ma say it be a good night While I'm on my yingling While I'm drinking Bud Light